I had lots of fun making this Chinese dragon model in Blender, so I thought I'd show you a breakdown of how I went about making it, showing the whole process from start to finish, and I'll break down the steps with a running commentary. So this was a logo for a recent course I'm running about how to become a 3D artist, so it only needed to be a 2D image. If I needed to animate this, I would have started with a long, thin dragon in a straight line and added some bones. But in this case, I didn't need to, so I used a curve so I could position it precisely around my ball. You can see there I was giving it a bevel just to get the idea of the thickness. And then I position my camera so I know exactly where things are. I did a very basic structure of the dragon's head, just starting with a cube, mirroring it and making the basic shape, which you can see here. It's much easier to start a sculpt with a basic shape like this, even if it is really, really basic. Before I position the head, I want to get the curve so it's the right thickness, and I need a bit of taper, so I actually used a circle object as the bevel object, then I can resize the circle, reshape it if I need to, and I can taper the ends with Alt-S, I think it is, so I can vary the thickness along my curve. Before positioning the head, I do some sculpting. So I start adding detail, making sure I'm happy with the overall design. This way I know the size of the head and how big it needs to be before attaching it to the body. And in fact, when I say attaching it to the body, I just placed it on the body. Keeping it a separate object means that I can keep my dragon's body as a curve and adapt it as needed. And I can re-sculpt or reshape the head anytime I need to as well. My sculpting process is always the same. Try and keep it as simple as possible for as long as possible. So don't do any remeshing to high detail until you've got that basic shape. And I'm using the grab brush for the first stages. Then when I get to this sort of higher detail here, where I've remeshed to a higher resolution, that's when I start going in adding detail. But you can see I'm using the grab brush far less. And I'm using brushes like the crease brush and the clay strips brush to add volume. Here I'm trying to do the horns as a curve. It kind of worked out, but it wasn't really that great. Having the horns as separate objects is helpful if you want to move them around or make adjustments, but it just kind of overcomplicated things a little bit really. I wanted the head to look kind of mechanical, but it ended up looking fairly organic in the end, even though it was textured metal. But you can kind of see from the way I'm sculpting it here that I tried to add that sort of mechanical element to it, especially when I go across to the crease brush and add these hard edges in. So in a way, I'm kind of sketching on the dragon's head, trying things out, seeing what works. The other good thing about having separate objects is you can just sculpt one and then repeat it easily like I'm doing here. I didn't have a huge amount of time. I would have liked to have worked on these sort of bony bits a bit more. But it's often the case with these projects that you kind of have to adapt things that are just about working and make them work or for, kind of force them to work. So I wasn't completely happy with the horns, so I kind of overlapped the edges and just got on with the shape. <laughs> Again, for the details here, I'm sharpening areas up, making it look a little bit more mechanical and less organic. I'm using the crease brush for this, and I call it the reverse crease, where you hold down control and it kind of pulls out a line. I sometimes use the scrape peak tool as well to flatten off edges. At some point around here, I have up the resolution as well. You get much sharper lines with higher resolution, but you have to make sure you've got the shape settled before you get onto this stage. Once you start doing details like this, and let's say you wanted to make a big adjustment, it can be really awkward and you can mess up the details that you've painted already. So now it's just a case of positioning the head, putting a little eyeball in there overlapping the eyeball so it looks inserted into the dragon's head. And at this point I'm getting fairly comfortable with the shape so I think a bit more about the details like the funny fin bits. I just got a plane and knife tooled the shape of some fins out of it, turned it into quads, extruded it out to add some thickness, did a little bit of sculpting just to adjust the shape, make the bits a bit more pointy. And then I added a curve and used a curve modifier so I could easily position these kind of fins onto the dragon. In some ways, this part would have been easier if the curve was in a long straight line and I'd used bones to position everything. And I'd probably do that if I were to do this shape and model again. That way it would have been easier to animate as well. What's more difficult with that approach is that it would have been tougher to get the exact shape that I wanted in this final image here. I must admit the curve modifier is sometimes a little bit awkward and you can see me struggling with it here as it pulls around the mesh and it's just a bit difficult to control at times. 
For the end of the tail, I taper it right down to a single point and then add a fin shape to it. You can see that I experiment with single curves. So I pull in a single curve like this and taper and edit it. And I was going to do lots of these and thought that's gonna take me absolutely ages. So I did a fin like I did with the other kind of fin bits with a flat shape with pointy bits out of it. And then I used some of these curves to kind of fill in and make it look more fluffy, wispy, sort of hairy, I suppose. So you can see how I'm making an extra fin here and making it point upwards as well so it splays out. Then just like the others, I add a bit of thickness to it, reposition it, and then I'll start sculpting these a bit more so they look more like hairs. And you can see here me positioning those extra curves to make it look more hairy, I suppose. This part can be a little bit time consuming positioning these things, but it's the fine details who expect a little bit of hassle, I suppose. It's nice though, because you can really see it coming together when you start adding those tiny details. So I was relatively comfortable at this point that I had the dragon in a position where I could start adding those fine details. So I thought I'd work on the background elements. It's quite simple, just added a plane, subdivided a few times, changed the shape of these rectangle bits. And for the sort of lines that go across, I just added a curve again and added some thickness to it. That way I could easily adjust it just by going to the bevel and changing the thickness rather than having to go into edit mode and change it. And it created those kind of sharp lines like that. So next is going across to the shader editor, adding some materials and lighting. I think the lighting was the most crucial aspect to this project. I used a strong blue light and a strong orange light. They're opposite ends of the color wheel, so they can really add a lot of excitement to your images. I did end up using a lot more lights than this as well, to highlight the face, for example, to make sure there was enough ambient light in the scene, not just from these directional lights. And there's a lot of tinkering and moving around and deleting and reapplying and adding. And that is one piece of advice I would give to any beginner out there. Really experiment loads with your lighting in different spots, different types of light, different intensity, different color. It can be really fun and quite a creative part of the process that lots of beginners miss out. They focus too much on the actual modeling stage. For the textures, I was really quick. I just used a box project, so you can kind of use any texture without unwrapping your objects, makes things nice and fast and easy, and just general PBR materials I found around the place. Interestingly, that was the one area that I was really quick and rough about. And you'll notice it in the scales if you look closely. They're not really following the line of the dragon, they're just box projected. But again, it's surprising what you can get away with with a relatively good model and some good lighting. Now I do tinker with the textures a fair bit to get them to my liking, but that's more to do with how they're interacting with the light than the actual texture itself. So I played a lot with the roughness and the metallic maps to get the right type of reflections so my lights would work really well. Now I've sped this footage up 30 times, I think, because it's an indication of how much I'm tinkering and playing, and it's all to do with the lighting, and I know I'm tinkering with the textures a lot, but it's the way they interact with the light that's important. I'm also playing a lot with the light position as well, so you can see I've put a light behind the model, which is working as a rim light in some ways. And once I'm happy with all that, then I'll go back in and start doing the very fine details of the dragon. And this is fairly simplistic stuff, I'm just going in, adding almost texture to these fins, and then I'll add some of those curves that are on the tail at the moment to flesh it out and give it some hairiness. And I've sped this bit up a fair bit because it's just really positioning those curves as if they're hairs, like I say, to give those fins a bit more hairiness or fluffiness or whatever you might want to call it. The one other thing I did that I forgot to record was I did go to the compositor and add a glare node, just so it's got a little bit of glow on the really bright spots. There were still a few final adjustments with the lights, moving them around, moving the background in and out to see the effects that would have, but I finally got there with something I was pleased with. And there we have it, the final image. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this process. If you are interested in my courses, then there's links in the description. Do comment below with any questions you might have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.